Hello, everybody. It's Sarah and Sarah. Hi, everyone. We're back. We are back. And we're back and we're still apart from each other. Sarah is in the laundry room. <laughs> I'm not crazy, though. Okay. <laughs> She's in the laundry room. I'm in the kitchen. and But I can hear her. Uh, and this video that we're going to do is a little bit delayed. I mean, this happened on Valentine's Day, but it was such a powerful thing and such a powerful kind of like story. And Sorry, but it was iconic. It's so iconic. And we, we wanted to talk about it because I think it meant so much to so many people. And I think it was one of those times where you, you know, you see these soccer players as humans and as peers and as yeah, people just like out, you. Reaching out to just people, you know. Yeah. And I. incredible. And I loved it because it just goes to show you, um, we'll, we'll, we'll get into talking about it, but it just goes to show you as much as things are accepted, there are situations out there where you, A, you either don't feel accepted or B, that even if you're feeling accepted, that doesn't mean that you yourself, you still need somebody to talk to if you don't have someone to talk to. Right. Yeah, of course. So what we're going to do. So Magdalena Erickson and Pernell Harder, they are... I mean, one of the most famous Woso couples, I will say. They are, we've done a couple videos on them. And they're very they, open. Very open and very, you know, you see them and they've been so successful for so long and they're sharing their journey of them being together. And I mean, it means a lot. So what they did is they opened up their Instagram DMs on Valentine's Day. And we're going to Slash read, Twitter. A slash, oh, on, oh, it was on Twitter too. Yeah, I think it was both. Oh, Okay. Because these are tweets that I'm looking at. Okay. They opened up their DMs to people just like you or me or anyone to say, hey, I need some, you know, you know, if you want to share your story, if you need someone to talk to, go to the, you know, they're, they're welcoming you DM them and they can hear it out. They want to hear it. They want to help you. They want to hear, be an ear for you. So I'm going to have Sarah read those tweets. So Magda wrote, I'm so lucky to have a relationship with the woman I love. But I know this isn't the case for everyone, especially in these times. In the LGBT community, these problems can feel even worse. So for the next few, next hours, Pernell Harder and I will open DMs for anyone who wants to chat. So then uh, Pernell Harder wrote, To come out should feel natural to anybody and likewise be accepted by everyone. For the next hours, Magda Erickson and I will open our DMs for anyone who struggles to come out, want to know about our experiences, or just look for any good for a good advice on valentine's day and she also wrote i'm lucky to have a family who has n been nothing but happy for me when i came out seven years ago i know a lot of people are struggling to tell their friends and families they are gay which must be the worst feeling i can imagine okay so i mean you know that they said that and i think the moment they said that it meant so much to so many people um because I stand I'm... the crap out of them yeah. after they did that. I was shook. I was like, uh, you should have seen me. I fainted. No. <laughs> um, I, yeah. I was just like, it was, it was incredible. Amazing. Like, who does that? So heartfelt. So sincere. I mean, so that they care. We all we did a video a couple um, weeks ago or months ago about, and they're part of that initiative called... Um, what is it called? Common Goal. You remember that, Sarah? Where mm -hmm. they're giving 1% of their... Um, they're giving 1% of their salary to uh, uniting the global football community in tackling the greatest social challenges of our time. So, I mean, this is this is who they are as humans. This is who they mm -hmm. are. They, you know, they they care. I mean, they care deeply. And I know, you know, the first thing I heard about the story, the first thing I thought of was I think people hear, oh, you know, being gay or being LGBT, um, you know, it's accepted. Everyone, you know, everyone has a sister or brother. It, or I'm, you know, this or, you know, it's like it's accepted. But it's like it's not that for everyone. Right. It's not, you know, depending on where you're from, what country you're from, your family dynamic. You know, if you're from like in, I know in America, the South has kind of a reputation for being very anti-LGBT. Mm -hmm. You know, you're from the South. That doesn't mean that you're accepted. And not just that. I keep thinking this too. You know, a lot of Gen Zers, I actually saw a statistic that said Gen Zers, one in six of them are are um, classified, they classify themselves as LGBT, one in six. So you think, oh my goodness, you know, people understand. And, but a lot of people my age, older than me, it's never been like that. So to just be like, if you're coming out later in life, just be like, oh, it's accepted. You have 40 years of people telling you it's wrong. It's bad. You're going to hell. I don't accept you. You're, you know, this is mm -hmm. disgusting. 
So That's even though it's accepted now, especially for younger people, that doesn't mean 40 years of people telling you horrible things means it's going to be easy either. Right. Yeah. And, you know, you think about in regards to your own personal, you might think, oh, my sister, or my brother has accepted it. But a lot of people internally still have a problem just to say, because we, to, you know, to accept themselves because we are conditioned throughout the years to say it's not acceptable. Yeah, I'm surprised. I'm surprised my siblings were like so okay with it. But I mean, it's along with the times are changing or whatever, you right. know. Like, everyone, like, all my brothers and sisters, they were fine with it. They're like, okay, cool, whatever. Um, you know, and then my parents, they had they had to warm up to the idea, but, you know. Right, right. Well, and it's also, like, I even, I've known people who worked in schools or people who work with young people who say, a lot of times the discussion is, oh, do you have a boyfriend, girlfriend, slash asking a person, oh, do you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend? Like, asking it to young males, asking it to young females so it's not like oh do you have an opposite gendered relationship it's like oh do you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend you know i have I mean? been asked that one time in my life so this girl that i worked with she was a legend by the way <laughs> <laughs> in my heart um she was the only person who has ever asked me so we work together and she asked me oh do you have a boyfriend and i go no and she goes oh do you have a girlfriend like it was the most normal thing. I swear <laughs> I wanted to kiss her right then and there. But get, she, no, yeah. that got to be appropriate at work, okay? Um, and it was amazing. It was the most amazing thing ever. Like I was like, oh my god! And this was what seven? Yeah, this was a long seven time years ago. ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was like seven years ago. Yeah. And I was just like, you, sweetie, you're the greatest human. <laughs> you had a bond with her after that. And well, she's like, oh, I ask everybody that. Yeah. And I'm like, oh wow. And for that to be kind of the new normal, I I I love it so much. But and that, she was straight, by the way. Just want yeah, to point that straight. out. And to, you know, for that to be the new normal, but then also not to forget it, that's not been the normal for all those years. So that's why you know, because a lot of times you you you're ex, you know you're just scared to say you know to be different to be something other than yeah. It's scary. It's, it's terrifying. Scary. Um. So for them to do that, then. So Pernell says, thanks for sharing your stories with us. We've been overwhelmed by the responses, and hopefully we've managed to help some people along the way. Sorry we couldn't get back to everyone tonight, but we'll pick it up again tomorrow. Good night and happy Valentine's Day. And then Magda, say, Magda said, thanks for sharing your stories with us. We've been overwhelmed by the responses, and hopefully we've managed to help some people along the way. Sorry we couldn't get back to everyone, but we'll pick it up tomorrow again. Good night and happy Valentine's Day. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's like almost the same message, but <laughs> and I will beautiful. say for them to empathize with so many people, you mm -hmm. know, to have that, yeah. you know, emotional um, feeling. It's an overwhelming type of feeling. I'm suspecting. You know what I mean? Somebody, um, even somebody we talked to in DMs, they were telling us that um, they got back to them and said, oh, "What an honor!" I know. Uh, I forget if they said Magda or Pernell, but they they got back to them and said and heard her story and gave a really thoughtful response and. I mean, especially for someone, to think of someone who I really idolize, for someone you idolize to get back to you about something that means so much, I mean, I mean. The fact that they just took the time out of their day. Yeah. You know, they dedicated like a whole afternoon or a whole night and a couple of days, it sounds like. I'm sure they, I'm sure they were flooded with messages. Exactly. And I, so you know. The fact that they did that was so beautiful. Oh, and I especially loved when someone tweeted Purnell that um, uh, absolutely rubbish, whatever, I'm out of here, you just lost a fan. And then she beautifully responds, see ya, don't want fans like you anyway. <laughs> you <laughs> can't that. see me, but I am bowing down to this queen. Yes, yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But no, that was, that was iconic. And I just want to talk about it just because it was, I think it meant so much to so many, including us. I mean, when you see, and like I talked about in other videos, you know, the women in WOSO or the women in lacrosse, the women in field hockey, the, you know, who are LGBT are leading the way in same sex relationships in sport. Yeah, they really are. And it's, it's crazy. And then I will say Magdalena, she does a, a column in the UK. I don't exactly know what publication this is um but she does a publication and her the title is as a gay footballer i know i am a role model and that's why i want to help lgbt people realize they're not alone and so she wrote a column i'll link it down below but she kind of talks about i'll read a little bit of it my partner my partner pernell 
Harder and I opened up our Twitter accounts and messages from members of the LGBT community last week and were overwhelmed by the response. And she kind of talks about how she, um, they opened up their Twitter, I guess it was Twitter, it wasn't Instagram, Mm -hmm. Twitter DMs. Um, And then she said, we'd imagine we were going to chat with people for an hour or so, but we spent more than two hours trying to answer as many people who'd sent us direct messages as we could. And she said, some people had questions about my experience of coming out and how to figure out whether you like boys or girls. Others spoke about their loneliness. Mm. More than one person said they never more than one person said they had never spoken before about being gay so yeah sometimes just telling someone anyone can be the first step to accepting yourself in my case i'm taking over for sarah (laughs) in my case i came out quite early to my parents and sister but even in a really accepting environment it's still difficult time when you're feeling like you're not normal it makes you feel lonely and insecure about yourself having someone there to tell you it is normal can mean so much yeah and i mean it's so true and, it, you know, I'll, I'll link the article down down below, but she just really talks about how, especially in sports or especially being LGBT, it's just like you if you feel like you're different or if you feel like, you know, people don't understand you, it's kind of like you're going to feel alone. You're going to feel, you know, you're not going to feel you're not going to feel good, you know? Yeah, basically. She says, personally, I would love to see more footballers come together more visibly as we do have an opportunity to affect and inspire change now more than ever, not in only sports, but also across society. Yeah. Amen. You, and that. you know how I take that too, sir? I take that as right now we are on the precipice of it being completely accepted. We are, but the people who are in, are in professional sports right now have the opportunity to be that those people who you look back in record books, like these were the first people that talked about it. And then in 10 years, that discussion, right now is the time for the discussion. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, we are rewriting the narrative. People might've said, well, no, five, 10 years ago, you know, with Megan Rapino or with Billie Jean King or Martina Navratilova, that was the discussion. But I think the discussion is still right now, you know? Especially like when I said the Gen Zers, one in six identify as LGBT. So, This is really the generation where it's changing, you know. That feeling of feeling alone, I think Sarah and I had that, you know, for a while. You know, I think everyone has that feeling at some point, especially who are a little bit older. Um, But like I said, there are still situations, uh, even in 2021, people still feel alone and not understood. Because you look at it, even if your parents are completely accepting of you being LGBT, I think most parents, especially who might be a little bit older had already kind of an idea for you in their head. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They had an idea that things are going to be traditional for the majority of older people. But now, you know, people having kids, I know Sarah has a brother and sister-in-law who says it doesn't matter what they are or aren't what they are, whatever they are. I embrace it. I accept it. I love it. But I just think this is great. And I wanted to talk about it because, you know, you know, Sarah and I did do kind of, you know, the lovers on Valentine's Day. And and this is kind of, the, you know, Pernell and uh, Magda said, you know, we know there's a lot of lovers out there, but there's a lot of people out there who still just need people to talk to. Mm-hmm. I will say, though, the event, the advent of the Internet for LGBT, I think is one of the greatest things that has happened for LGBT because back in the old days there um you i mean before even my time you just dated people who maybe were in your local area who yes, may be back gay. in the 13th century with the yeah. pioneers and now with the that internet you joke. can talk to any person at any time in you know even sarah and i i was from california she was from iowa it's kind of like you didn't have to be in those but you, geographically it doesn't matter these days yeah, and there's I, no and boundaries I, really yeah i mean no bound and you I, know what i'm saying i think that's something so special too so for them but don't to... catfish and don't get catfish okay? <laughs> exactly it's almost was catfish <laughs> that's a whole me. nother series um, but for magda and pernell to kind of just say hey we're here we want to talk and them being such role models for people i loved it i want to talk about it to have people you know to out there who said i, I know what you're coming but it's never easy even with you know sarah even with people to talk to it's never easy and things like this especially being understood i remember being young right and i know people who sometimes 
and I, just being understood is hard to begin with sometimes, you know, especially when you're young and you don't understand, you know, I, I, when I was a kid, you just were so insecure about so many things, even things that are so dumb. Remember when Sam Mewis, Christy said, oh, you like Taylor Swift? And Sam Mewis goes, no, I don't. The <laughs> dumbest, so in there. Yeah, the dumbest things people are um, insecure about, but things that are so important, like who you are, you know, it's just like you, you, the insecurity is there. And, um, you know, that's why I think the Internet's a great resource to say um to help people what do you guys think did you think this was awesome um i just want it's a happy story especially for valentine's day yeah it's amazing I'm, I'm still not over it and i will never get over it and it's forever beautiful yeah forever. i love exactly exactly questions comments down below tell us what you think and we love the story and yeah and i we're, mean we yeah. were always um magda and pernell i mean we love them they're they're everything but i mean like sarah said this kind of bumps them up a notch or two. Oh yeah, they were not on our list for yeah. top two thousand couples, Sarah. So this well, twenty twenty two, they're going to be on the twenty twenty one list. Exactly, number one, exactly. above everybody. Sorry, Crashlin, um, Sue and Rapino. <laughs> Sorry, guys, you've been bumped. You, yeah. So this, this, you know, exactly. They, they're definitely on the twenty twenty one list. Questions, oh, yeah. comments down below. We'll talk to you guys later. All right, bye. bye.